so today we're gonna to talk about the Nikon Z9. I just got it last week. I am so excited about this camera. I haven't figured it all out yet. There's new functions and features, but I will say this. I didn't think that I could be any more inspired in photography or any more passionate or any more excited about photography, but here I am. And I wanted to make this video as one of the first videos that I could as far as what the camera could be used for besides sports and wildlife. You guys know that I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. Um, I do like to do landscapes sometimes, you know, when I'm hiking, I would take a really small camera for that. But for the most part, I do weddings and portrait for paid shoots and uh, family photography. People would probably think that you would be crazy to use the Nikon Z9 for family photography. Is it overkill? People, you know, are asking if it's overkill for weddings. So I just, the, the simple answer is no, it's not overkill. Of course, there are gonna be aspects of it that are overkill, like the 45 megapixel sensor, not necessary for weddings, not necessary for family shoots, um, only necessary if you're gonna blow pictures up billboard, uh, New York Times Square size, and even then you'd probably wanna use a medium format camera anyway. So let's jump into why I would recommend using this camera if you're a family photographer. And when I'm talking about family photographers, I'm talking about lifestyle family photographers. Um, if you just shoot in your studio and you don't have any sort of tricky lighting and you know everything's pretty much set up just the way you want it, I don't really recommend this camera for you unless you're doing um, campaigns for children's clothing or something like that. Um, so just like regular family photographer in studio, I wouldn't bother with this camera. If you are a family lifestyle photographer, that's where this camera is really going to impact your work. And you know me, I feel like if you're a good photographer, you could pick up any camera and as long as you know, you know, certain basic controls, you come out with a really good picture. So I'm not saying that, oh, you have to have the top of the line to be a good photographer. So don't get me wrong there. So I just, I want to talk about some of the features of this camera as to why I think it'd be great for family lifestyle photographers. The first one being the 20 frames per second. Now you might think, oh my gosh, why? Why would somebody need 20 frames per second if they're a family and lifestyle photographer? Well, if you're dealing with toddlers and you're dealing with children and, and people running around and having fun and you're not doing the pose shots, sometimes it's really, really important to maybe get that one slight smile that the child gave or when the, the child when the child's eyes cut to you um, or you know there's a little moment that you captured um, and you got one image out of that now a lot of cameras can shoot 20 frames per second or 10 frames per second or they you know they have a high fps whatever what i'm talking about though is if you put it in the 20 frames per second if you put it in the eye detection or people detection mode while you do that you can worry about capturing the moment you don't have to worry about, did I get the shot? Did I miss it? Did I get that moment? Because this camera is allowing you to get that moment. That is what is so exciting about it is the eye autofocus is really, really amazing. So even at f2.8 on a lens that's not even made for this camera, you know, I had to get an adapter for my 24 to 70 2.8 because I'm still using the other one, the old one. Um, I'm not using the Z mount. So even with that lens, I'm still capturing relatively sharp images. I took the camera out with my kids and I purposely wanted to go when the sun was about to go down because I wanted to get that extreme backlight. Now, what is fantastic about it is this camera was able to capture my children relatively sharply, relatively sharply, sharp, <laughs> with relative sharpness, <laughs> they were pretty sharp. Even with this extreme backlight scenario that I had going on, and not just in photography, but when it was in the video mode. That is so important for photographers today. Um, how many photographers do you know are just still photographers and they don't do a little bit of video side work? And we'll get into the video aspect of this camera for family and lifestyle photographers in a minute as well. So you've got your eye autofocus, You've got your 20 frames per second if you needed it. You've got, it's being able to actually capture and focus on the subject with extreme backlight scenario. And if you're a Z uh, shooter, if you're a Nikon Z shooter, you know how important that is um, because you've been in situations where there's even just a little bit of backlight 
or there's some sort of light interference and your camera is not able to focus, even without it being in the eye um, autofocus mode, you're just trying to focus it yourself and it's not working. This camera shoots true to color for the most part. All Nikons that I've had experience with shoot a little cool. And this one is not an exception to that, except it's truer to color than any other Nikon that I have actually shot with. One other point is the ISO. So the noise that this camera produces is very, very uh, slight compared to a lot of the other Z cameras, a lot of the other DSLRs that I have actually used. Um, I would say that it is comparable to the D5 it's better than the D5. I never got the D6. I never tried the D6. I was done with the DSLRs. I have a whole backstory for that. But um, I would say that this camera shoots amazingly well on high ISO. I think personally, I could go up to 10,000 with no problem and being able to adjust the, the noise a little bit later in Lightroom. This is extremely important for those lifestyle photographers. Most of the time we're using natural light because we want to have a lower presence in front of the families, in front of the children. And using the natural light, uh, window light works so much better for us because we don't have fancy flashes going off and all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, they're being, they're acting normally with the ones that they love in their own home, in their own spaces, or the places that they choose. So it's really just amazing to be able to go up to those high ISOs when you need to. Any good photographer knows how to use the natural light to their advantage. And having this camera allows you to be able to push it to the limits you might need. You know, you don't know what the lighting is going to be like in everyone's house where, the, you know, of course you're going to choose somewhere with big windows or good light, but you know, you never know what you're going to walk into. So ISO 10,000, perfect for those lifestyle newborn, lifestyle family photographers. Or, sorry, it goes up to ISO 25,600 or actually higher than that. Um, but I'm saying personally, ISO 10,000 is where I'd cap it. You might have a different preference. You might cap it even higher than that. I would say one of the cons of this camera, if you're a family lifestyle photographer, is that it's really big. This has a very large presence. So it could possibly intimidate people like children or even the dads sometimes, and you don't wanna be intimidating. And in that instance, of course, if you're inside a home, you're gonna to wanna to use probably a short lens. But if you, if they, if your couple, or if your couple, if your family chooses to go outside on location, you could use a relatively long lens and stay back from the people and just let them do their natural thing, you know, walking, playing together and, the wonderful thing is they won't see the presence of the camera if you're further back. I've actually used the 200-500 on shoots like this before. Of course, the 70 to 200 because it's one of my favorite lenses, but you can use a long lens, stay back, have that low profile, let the family play, have fun, maybe just shout a little bit of direction every once in a while, like walk this way, turn that way, you know, because of course you want them set up with the light that's gonna be the most flattering for them. But yeah, I would say that would be the only con, or the biggest con would be how big the camera actually is. It also has the vertical grip. And so, you know, when you're doing a lifestyle portrait shoot, a lot of times you will be shooting in vertical, um, vertical portrait orientation. Um, and you don't have to go like that and knock people out or hit yourself on the wall or whatever, knock a vase over. Yeah, not cool. So, you know, it's wonderful that you have that vertical grip there to be able to photograph in portrait mode, portrait orientation. I've learned with you guys that I have to really watch what I say. So if I say one little wrong thing, I get corrected and I, I usually know what it is, but I just have brain fog because I have lupus and fibromyalgia and rheumatoid arthritis and all these health problems. Anyway, okay, so on to video as well. This is amazing. If you are a hybrid photographer or if you wanna offer something special to your clients, so let's say you mainly shoot photography, you don't really do a whole lot of videography, but you wanna make that extra dollar or you wanna make that extra go over the top, you know, 200% so that your clients know exactly how important they are to you. You can take little clips of the family in say 60 frames per second. You can even do 120p at 4K now with this camera. And what's amazing about that is you could make a little trailer like one to two minutes long um, and it focuses so well with the eye autofocus. That's why I'm even bringing this up is 
with this being such a good hybrid camera, you stand to make a lot of extra money from this, being able to offer the one to two minute clips with your photography package, or you could even do it for free. You know, you could add the one to two minute little clips to go over the top for your clients and let them know how much you appreciate them, give them a Christmas gift, that type of thing. And I think that's just wonderful. I think that's lovely whether you make more money out of it or whether you make them happy. You're gonna make them happy either way. But in this business, what I've found is being able to over deliver, being able to offer more is wonderful for the clients. You've never had a client say, I didn't want that or I want less or whatever. Um, anything that you present to the client, many times they want it. So I also did footage of my children running around with the sunlight, you know, uh, in the backlight, crazy crazy this camera was able to focus and like i said this is not native to this camera body and this lens was able to focus relatively well obviously the biggest drawback of this camera is the price point at fifty five hundred dollars this camera comes in a little bit steep i would think for the family lifestyle photographers now if you're a high-end family lifestyle photographer or you're in a big city i don't think it would be a problem but the price point is just a little bit over the top of what most family photographers are at which is probably in that three thousand dollar range for their camera but i will say what you get for the price is phenomenal like i said at the beginning of the video i live breathe photography I love photography. I think about it all the time. I see light coming across my child's face and, oh, I wish I had my camera right up at my face, you know, to take that picture right then and there. I think about it constantly. When I'm out with my friends, I'm like, oh, look, look at how beautiful of a picture that would be. And they're like, what? what? I mean, that's just how I am. I'm always thinking about photography, always inspired, always passionate. And this camera has actually made me even more excited about photography, which is really hard to do. But anyway, guys, that's the video. Take it or leave it. If you think that this camera is way too overkill for a family lifestyle photographer, let me know. If you think that you want this camera, let me know. Um, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.